Act 1, Day 5. Welcome back to We the Revolution. I'm the voice of Dog. No, Burrell is still alive. Here he is. Oh, Burrell is on trial. I see. The revolutionaries want him to be thrown into prison. The common folk and the, and the family want him to be killed. Well, look at this portrait. Look at this man. Look at fucking Robespierre. <laughs> Dr. Ivo Robespierre here. Now I gotta fix my capture. It was worth it. Owing to his passionate devotion to the revolutionary cause, he is widely referred to as the Incorruptible. As the leader of the Rackable Jacobins, he preserves order with the National Convention, in the National Convention, with an iron fist, and if need be, terror. Undeniably the most powerful man in Paris in the age of revolution, as yet none have dared defy him. Aging commander of the National Guard. His portraits aren't flattering either. That's kind of funny. Hmm. Our reputation is quite low. Someone is taking care of your reputation behind the scenes. Who could this mystery admirer be? I wonder. All right. In the dock sits Matthew Matthew Borel, the former commander and former commander in chief of the National Guard. The defendant stands accused of causing the death of thirty four people who took part in the demonstration against monarchy monarchic authority. He is charged with treason and corruption. Around three PM, two spontaneous groups of protesters stumbled upon each other in one of the streets leading to P Place Vedome. A quarrel broke out between the supporters and opponents of Citizen Capet, with both sides engaged in a heated argument. None of the involved parties managed to gain the upper hand, and they quickly resorted to name-calling and public threats. Soon after, a National Guard detachment led by the defendant arrived on the scene. According to the eyewitness testimony of Blaise Fawcett, Commander-in-Chief Mar Matthew Burrell stood himself between the two groups alone and attempted to talk sense into them. Hmm. So he tried to... He, he tried to not... He didn't shoot them right away, it sounds like. But order was not maintained. He was quickly shouted down by the protesters. A few of them vocally accused the commander-in-chief of violating their freedom of speech. Yeah, I bet they did. A rock flew over Burel's head. He then walked up to the regiment that until this point had stood away from the crowds. The commander-in-chief ordered them to load their muskets and aim at the protesters. He shouted to the mob that they should leave, to which the people of France, of course, ignored. Then, as Fossa testified, another rock barely missed his head. This time it managed to hit one of the soldiers in the chest, leaving him breathless for a moment. Burel ordered the troops to fire. Bullets reached 34 people in total on both sides of the protest. During his arrest, Burel tried to explain that he had the tribunal's opinion, which stated he could use force if needed. He tried to defend himself with similar opinions from the convention. Professor Tinville did not care for such ex explanations, and his fiery speech convinced the deputies to dismiss him. Ah, uh, now he is trying to convince the judge to impose an additional punishment. Hmm. We all know who this villain is. Commander-in-chief of the National Guard and... Shut up already! <laughs> wow. Let us proceed directly to the testimony then. I see. I see where we stand.
Accusation. Causing death. There is one trap in here. The tribunal's opinion are extenuating circumstances. Or defense. They're either a defense or extenuating circumstances. Or they're a trap. Yeah, that, that's clearly a trap. Even though we gave... We gave him permission to shoot as many people as he liked. Injured soldier? Accusation? Oh yeah, we're gonna pretend we didn't do that. We're gonna pretend the hell out of not doing that. Okay. Protesters, course of events. Hmm. You guys are wrong, and so was I. <clears throat> the soldier that was injured was an extenu... Well... Yeah. All right, so the tribunal's opi opinion is a defense. Commander-in-chief's dismissal, that's a uh, course of events. Commander-in-chief's recklessness, that's an accusation. Or a personality. Okay. Okay. Order to load muskets was the course of events. Extenuating circumstances that, that a soldier was injured. There's still one other extenuating circumstance. There are still three questions. Accusation. Recklessness. Crowd's fervor. Extenuating circumstance. Freedom of speech. An accusation. Oh, an attack on freedom of speech. Okay, there we go. Is the condemned aware of the severity of the charges? You understand that 34 citizens were killed. Those that were killed were aggressors who dared to attack a soldier. All 34 of them. No, he was hit by a rock thrown by a single person. But before that, another rock threw up, flew over my head. I had reason to believe that the mob would become violent. But that's exactly why you were sent there, to prevent violence. And I did. Several people died, but the rest of the citizens are safe. The Commander-in-Chief is a real piece of work. He's not anymore. Were you given a reason for your dismissal? Multiple reasons. I will not address all of them, but the one that wounded me the most was my supposed incompetence. You caused the death of... Many people have died during the Revolution. And yet the murderers are members of the convention, or judges of the tribunals. The accused should choose his words more carefully. That is slander, a tool of the monarchist machine. Spare me your speeches. If you had any decency left in you, you would remain silent. Oh, Burel is getting saucy. I like this. If we let you go, would you go back to your duty? No. Now I can see that being a scapegoat is the best I could have hoped for here. A deputy or a judge makes a mistake, so they convict a soldier. That is how it has always been, and how it will always be. Let's behead a politician! <laughs> I need a quick zoom. Oh shit. Oh shit, I fucked up. There we go. Oh god, this is so inconvenient to do. 
behind the scenes, folks, with the voice of dogs. Oh my, they already want him killed. All right, summon the witness. Please introduce yourself. Blaze Fawcett. I'm a simple blacksmith. What do you conf do you confirm being a witness out of the events that are the cause of our gathering today? I was a witness. I mean, I was there. I saw everything and I want to talk about it. I really do. Can you can you accuse recall from what the people from both sides were saying? Yeah, that's real valuable. That sounds incredibly valuable. Please tell us if you saw exactly how the accused acted. The captain. He's a captain, right? Go on. He stood between the people and started yelling at them. If someone came up to him, he pushed them away and made threats, shaking his fist. But I think he meant well. Why do you think that? I don't know, just a feeling I had. Who attacked first, the crowd or the guard? I'd say the crowd. They threw something at that poor soldier. After that, well, they started shooting. There was no order? I didn't hear any orders. It was loud and it all happened so fast. dropped it just a little bit. Yeah, let's look at the report. Uh, was this act counter-revolutionary in nature? What was the reason for the commander's res resignation? Location? Or what was the first thing the commander asked of the crowd after separating the feuding sides? No. N yes? I don't... I'm not good at answering this question. Incompetence. I don't think it was counter-revolutionary. A leading to place Vendome? That was it, right? It was like a side street? <clears throat> okay, we do not have an answer for this. Right, counter-revolution is trying to put the king back in power, right? Thank you for putting it that way. That I, if I can... If I can, like, you know, remind myself of that, it helps. <laughs> Tell us about that order to load muskets. Wait, no. Why did the citizens stand between the fighting groups? Or no. What words did you address... What words did you use when addressing the crowd? I asked them for a moment of silence. There it is. Then when they were quiet, why they were fighting. That's when the peace ended and both, start, start, both sides started throwing accusations. Maybe you should, shouldn't have intervened. Maybe you only agitated the crowd more. How? By asking for a moment of silence? I was trying to shout over the crowd. Someone accused me of being a spy trying to silence them and suppress their freedom of speech. Was that your aim? My aim is to prevent bloodshed. As you can see, it was impossible. Yeah, the king is alive. He, he fled the country. Why did you stand between the fighting groups? I know for a fact that you can decrease tension with reason and mediation of a third party. I was not involved with either of the groups. Do you mean to say that you are not a supporter of the revolution? During these events, I was a soldier and now officer first and foremost. I could not allow myself the comfort of having political views. Why? The security of the people was the most important thing. Citizens from surrounding houses first, protesters second. Since we are far beyond those events, I take this lack of a clear answer as evidence of your support for the monarchy. I've always remained loyal to France and her people. Well... Silence.
if we death penalty. Oh my. Let's see if we can soften up the, the jury a bit. Does the accused not think the order to load muskets may have been issued too early? Why? Because it could have further aggravated the crowd? The people of Paris have an ugly history of impaling heads on spikes. I had a sizable mob before me that was quite obviously ready to attack us at any moment. No, the, the order was not issued too early. We should have started shooting as soon as we arrived instead of wasting our time trying to calm them down. So you believe in brute force rather than diplomacy? If diplomacy had any chance of success in this situation, deputies of the convention would have been sent instead of the guard, yet not one of them decided to show up. I wonder why. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty strong answer. How was one of your soldiers injured? He was hit in the chest with a rock. Did you try to calm the crowd? You must be joking. Why do you say that? They wanted blood, their own or ours. It did not matter, they just wanted it spilled. And you gave them what they wanted. Yeah, this dude isn't a monarchist. This dude is just trying to do his job. Like... We've been, we've been talking, we've had, like, quite a few people who are not really guilty of the things they've been, they've been accused of. It seems like a very troubling time, legally, is what I'm getting from this. You chose to take people's lives. Did that document come from God? Alright, can we get him to prison? During your arrest, you said that you were given official documents issued by... Uh-oh. May I interrupt? That line of defense is pure nonsense. Why is that? I brought the document myself to be signed by the judge. He signed it. He gave me the right to use force in the case of immediate danger from the protesters. You killed 34 people! Would you rather there were hundreds of dead soldiers and protesters with the rest of them still fighting each other? I had good reason to use force. And the fact that I am standing here accused only confirms that the judge present here and the deputies of the convention are merely looking for a scapegoat. Nonsense. The convention would never. Here is the document signed by Judge Alexis Fideli and the head of the tribunal, Raymond DeVoy. Two judges confirmed my right to use weapons. It was a recommendation for the convention so they could write up such law. And I recommend that you release me and sentence these judges to death instead. He's right, you know. Well, we got it. But we had to use... We had to tank our reputation to do it. I think that's going to hurt us a bit, probably. But we did it, guys. The jury agrees. Yeah, we ate the poison. <laughs> All right. Prison. Stamp that wax. I hereby sentence Matthew Burrell to prison. May the convict ponder his actions. He murdered so many and what? That's it? The lives of 34 people mean less to you than that of a former commander-in-chief? Achievement unlocked. Blood on your hands. Four out of four. Good job. Reputation plus one, influence plus one. Did pretty okay there. Stood, stayed alive. We're staying alive, guys. It's not easy here. <laughs> Blood on your hands. Good job. He's ours. There can be no more demeaning experience for revolutionary Paris than the escape of Citizen Capet. He escaped, slipped right from their hands, and the revolution now seems feeble and weak. The people resemble a child that could be easily duped by anyone. However, the Republic comp quickly composed itself thanks to a postmaster and his people who were able to catch the fugitives escaping to Montmédy. Ordinary citizens led to the fall of a monarch. You will have a chance to serve the Republic as well, for Citizen Capet will face the tribunal tomorrow. 
He will choose how he will be remembered, as a traitor and a coward or as an unlucky statesman. If it were for the prison guards to decide, there would only be one arc outcome. Hmm. Allow the guards to to mess up Citizen Capet? So Citizen Capet was a counter-revolutionary. Right? Am I getting that right? Wait, why is this on me? Or you mean the choice is on me? Right, it's not my fault that this is happening. The revolutionaries will appreciate this, right? Maybe. Well, everyone hates us. Why would you hate me for playing with the children? What do you want from me, wife? Oh, Capay is Louis. I'm sorry. I, mm, yeah. One of my blind spots, you know, French history. <laughs> it's one of them. Political debate. Opening night at the theater. Theater. Work on tomorrow's trial. Make everyone unhappy. Unlock more question effects in court. I see. Or evening gambling. Let's play with the children. Wife, why do you hate me? Aha! Synergy. Day six. Oh my, there, there he is. Well, our reputation is pretty low. Oh. Oh. Thanks, son. This is like this you know how you could uh you know how your how your kid draw uh drew um uh drew things with for you if you got him crayons, you know. Two acquittals, two prison, one death penalty. Oh my, this one has public opinion. Oh my. Oh my. Oh dear. Unavail Report is unavailable in this case. Okay. Here he is. He's here, folks. <laughs> Who's Bruno Fideli? Your older brother. Ah, he's the dead one. He was chosen to inherit, to inherit your father's business and use it as the foundation on which to expand your family's affluence. But his crime changed everything, casting shame upon the family name. And then Bruden was killed on the battlefield. In the war. In a war. Alright. Louis Capet, I hereby open your trial. Ask, answer the questions when asked. Capet is the name of one of my ancestors. My name is Louis Auguste Bourbon. That may have been your name before you raised your hand against the people you had sworn to defend. As a king, I have never done a thing against my people. I love them, and I still do. Objection! There is evidence of Louis Capet's treason against the people of France. He should be tried as a foreigner or an enemy, not a citizen of the Republic. 
questioning the defendant will stir the impatient audience. Once angered, the people may even start a riot. Hmm. All right. His crimes, Louis Capet, are counter-revolution, treason, fraud, advocating monarchy, and neglect of duty. Compatriots, Citizen Capet, previously known as King Louis XVI of France, must be punished for conspiring against the people of France. Louis Capet tried to defend his absolute authority by plotting against the National Constituents Assembly and the people of France. We all remember the July of 1789. He gathered an army, 15 foreign regiments, and ordered them to surround Paris. Soldiers led by Baron de Bensval were to capture deputies and shoot at citizens defending the reforms. And so they did. The Royal German Regiment drew first blood. All right, so our first paragraph here. Defend his absolute authority, gather an army, surround Paris. Let's see if we can, like, do this piecemeal, you know? Defending his authority, is that an accusation, a motive, a method, or a witness? No traps, ten questions to reveal. We've got a lot of info to go through here. Defending his authority is a motive. Correct. What's next? Gathered an army. Gathered armed forces. That's a uh, method or an accusation. It's either a method or an accusation. It's a method by which... Yeah, because defending his authority was an accusation, so this is a method. Yes. And then he surrounded the city of Paris, which was an accusation. No. Incorrect. Let's go back there later. After the plot failed, Louis Capet tried to flee. Oh, that's another method? Let's see. Okay, yeah, you're right. After the plot failed, Louis Capet tried to flee the country with his family and scheme with foreign monarchs abroad. Is that not the reason he took flight from the Tuileries one night in June of 1791 using someone else's passport? Was he not heading to Montmédy, where his loyal armies were stationed, ready to take him to Austria? If it were not for Postmaster Doré, the scheme would have ended tragically for us. All right, so we tried to flee. Attempted to flee the country is an accusation. International plot. Well, okay, fake passport. <laughs> Is this, like, is this the equipment of Georgie's passport here? Here's the fake passport. Method, yeah, it's the method by which he got out of the country. International plot is an accusation. Yes. All right. Next. Second page, or no. Louis Capet will never abandon the thought of suppressing the revolution by force. Before the events of 1792, he gave an order for the Swiss Guard stationed the Tuileries to be doubled. He conducted a public muster in front of horrified citizens. The people had no choice. They had to act before Capet attacked. Citizens of Paris who tried to stop the madness were shot at, even at Capet's escape to the National Assembly. Evidence, an order issued by Marshal, Marshal de Broglie to Baron de Bez, ben, Besenval. Names are very hard in this game. Suppressing the revolution is an accusation. Doubling the size of the guard is probably a method. Or is suppressing the revolution his motive? No, it's an accusation. Could be more than one. No, we're done with accusations. Doubling the size of the guard is a method. Shooting civilians is an accusation. Suppressing the revolution is also a motive. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. So.
hey, look, the citizens... Hey, the citizens and the revolutionaries want to see the king killed. Family does not. That's... Okay, no report for this one. What did the accused plan to do with the constituents' deputy deputies? The assembly that I joined on 27th June 1789 granted immunity to its members, and I respect that. And yet you ordered your soldiers to seize and imprison the deputies, and perhaps even execute them. There is no evidence of that. My enemies spread rumors to get rid of me. We don't need evidence from a coward who runs from his own people. Has the accused ever considered Paris and its citizens to be his enemies? I ask that you explain the question. How can you deny it if you do not understand the question? Your army surrounded Paris. Is that not what you do to your enemies? My soldiers were there to ensure public order while the National Assembly was in session. Adequate forces were already present in Paris. Was that not enough? People are irritated. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Death penalty. Increase. Prison. Increase. Acquittal. Death. 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 Jury has yet to reach a verdict. Who was responsible for the delivery of the passport? Who was responsible for the delivery of the passport of the man called Penay? My butler. City Hall's not received any submissions from your butler. <laughs> um, I think we should acquit the king. I don't think he did anything wrong. I know, yeah, if I if I acquit the king, then the chat will fucking kill me. Louis Capet's butler was seen at the Austrian em embassy. They surely took care of all the documents for the defectors. That is mere hearsay. Who said such a thing? Bring him here so that he may repeat it. There is no need. That is hard evidence, especially in light of what the accused has told us. We are on prison. Who helped you suppress the revolution? Frederick William II, Francis II, Catherine II, or maybe your relative Charles IV. <laughs> if we kill the king, are we any worse than the king? And furthermore, justice awaits them as well. Nonsense, all of it. My only desire to take my family out of Paris is I do not wish for them to suffer house arrest. We all know the European monarchs despise our ideals of freedom, equality, and brotherhood. Am I to understand that you tried to prepare a joint military intervention? I deny any such accusation. There is no evidence for such outrageous claims. I would never turn against my beloved France. Liar! He'd sell his own mother, never mind his country. Call in the witness, Jean Dore. Oh my. Postmaster. Yeah, the, the, the place is on fire. They're starting the riot. Did the accused Louis Capet introduce himself to the witness with his full name? No, he didn't introduce himself at all. He only produced someone else's documents. So he tried to hide his identity. You could say so. I used the name from the documents after he showed them to me. He never objected. And how did you learn of his true identity? By the image on the paper as assign assignation? On the paper assignation. Then a messenger from General Lafayette concerned my, confirmed my suspicions. I ran as fast as I could to Varennes to inform the authorities. There it is, folks. We've reached it. We have reached the, the conditions for death penalty. We are getting close to a riot. 
Did the accused tell anyone the destination of his journey, or was the accused acting like a defector? Was he nervous or in a hurry? Did the accused tell anyone of the destination of his journey? He asked for the way to Montmedy. I told him to go through Varans and Argonne and warn the coachman to be careful. The road is difficult there. Would the accused like to comment on this testimony? It confirms that I had no intention of escaping. I was merely traveling. It is the right of any free citizen. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, man. That's huge. Fine. I guess I need to do that last one then, huh? And hope I get it. Was the accused planning to reclaim his authority in Paris? And reestablish an absolute monarchy? Why would I do that? According to constitutional law, I was still the king. And why did you raise a number of troops in the, tu in the Tuileries? I feared for my family's life. It is not a mystery that the citizens of Paris were incited to seize the palace and capture us, especially as it was Mr. Danton's goal. It is clear, then, that the guard were organized against the citizens of Paris, many of whom did fall in the Tuileries. Against violence and disorder, Mr. Tinville, not against my people. Well, we're running out of time here. I guess it's prison, then. <laughs> let's not let's not execute the king. <laughs> We're going to change it. This is this is historically, yeah, we should have executed the king, but we're not. I don't think we're going to do it. I'm so sorry. I mean, we'll make our family happy. That'll help. Monsieur Le Juge. The crowd in front of the building is enraged. There may soon be a massacre. A rumor has spread around about hidden e evidence of Citizen Capet's trees and people have gone mad. What evidence? I will go to them. I would ask you all to stay in your seats until I return. Oh no. Oh no, I have to talk to the crowd. No, I'm not good at this. This is really hard. People! What vexes you? Why are you so angry? The king lied to us! That coward ran from us! He'll surely run from justice as well! We found proof of the king's treachery in his secret iron cabinet! Enemy's attitude towards the subject. Withdrawn. Withdrawn. Hmm, do I straight manipulate them? A strong argument. Commence persuasion. Louis Capet is just flesh and blood. Oh, there's a timer a citizen, too. Just like you. He cannot escape the long arm of the law. We won't turn a blind eye to new evidence. We shall dutifully pursue each line of inquiry for the Republic and only for the Republic. Justice must return to our country and stay here for good. No one is more concerned about this matter than a judge of the tribunal. Doing the best, questionable success. I did the best I could.
Ugh. Evidence has been found. Really? Tell us about this iron cabinet. I hid nothing from the convention. No one has asked me about the existence of such things. Wait! Hang on! Our family switched! Our family switched! What the hell? Family! Why? You kept your correspondence well hidden under lock and key. It could only be retrieved by the assistance of a master locksmith. Any affluent Parisian has a lockable cabinet. I, for one, am keenly interested in locksmithing. Hmm. Oh. Alright, now we've got a report. Was his act counter-revolutionary in nature? Yes. According to the defendant, why did Emperor Leopold II write him letters? Did Citizen Capet explain his reasoning behind Roland's mission of corruption? <laughs> I'm kind of dying here. I'm, I'm pretty unpopular. Okay, we've got more we've got more questions. A stealing carbon, this is We the Revolution by Poly Slash Games. It's pretty neat. I, I'm enjoying it so far. Right now we've got the King of France, or the deposed King of France, on trial here. We're deciding what to do with him. King Louis the Sixteenth. All right. After the plot failed, he tried to flee the country with his family and scheme with foreign monarchs abroad. Louis Capet will never abandon the thought of suppressing the revolution by force. These are like the same things, really. A letter is evidence. Yeah. Evidence an order issued by Marshal de Broglie to Baron de Ben de Senval. Instructions issued by the Minister of Internal Affairs Jean Marie Roland. Instructions issued by the Minister of Internal Affairs. A letter from Emperor Leopold II. A letter from the Duke of Brunswick, Charles William Ferdinand. Course of events. Attempted escape. Minister's order. Letter from the Emperor. No, that's not a course of event. And neither is that. Okay. Okay. Suppressing the revolution. Letter from the Duke should be evidence. Letter from the Emperor should be evidence. Oh yeah, I know. There are, there are more papers. I'll read them. The deputies of the so-called National Assembly are to be carefully questioned, and if any of them should display common sense and cease to support the Assembly, reward him with an extraordinary high allowance and forward His Majesty's thanks. Ah. Hmm. He's trying to bribe us. Somebody's trying to bribe us right now. We trust that with God's grace and help, His Majesty will soon arrive within the Imperial borders for us to grant HM, as well as our beloved sister, safely and potentially take the steps necessary to reestablish the national European orders within the borders of France. Hmm. Colonel, let's see, Leopold II Habsburg. His Majesty, His Imperial Majesty, the Holy Roman Emperor, King of Hungary, Bohemia, Croatia, Dalmatia. Jeez. Should any reason appear, shoot the rebels without hesitation, just as his majesty ordered. Have no, mer just have no mercy, for they shall have none either. Y 
Your grace, soon we will come to your majesty's rescue. However, for the time being, I implore his, your majesty to muster local troops that remain loyal. I shall issue a warning to your majesty's subjects that any and all who dare raise a hand against your majesty would suffer the directest, the direst of consequences. My armies await my orders to curb the tide of anarchy in your majesty's country. Okay. Did the accused intend to lead the Emperor's forces to France? Oh, wait, I haven't unlocked them all yet. Suppressing revolution. That's counter-revolution. That's also method, isn't it? Minister's order is a method. Counter-revolution. There we go. Now, you were aware of the plans of the Emperor and the Duke of Brunswick. Why did you not warn the National Assembly and the army? Hmm. You need to speak up. I did not deem their threat serious. That reeks of treason. Allow me to quote. My armies await my orders. Does that not, does that not sound like a serious threat? Prince Charles is impetuous, but I never once thought he would dare attack France. Yes. Was the accused responsible for the attempts to bribe deputies of the assembly in order to apologize? it? Yeah, I, I just got that. I did not sign that document, sir. But it was found in a cache belonging to the accused. It speaks of thanks from the king. Well, I believe it, and that's what matters, because I'm the judge. <laughs> My intention was to put Minister Roland on trial for abusing his power. I kept the document for that occasion. A trial that has not happened for three years now. A trial that needs to happen. Roland will confess to the guillotine. That is the fault of the Minister of Justice. I ordered him to carry out an investigation and to punish the Minister of Internal Affairs. Well, did you intend... Did, did, did the accused intend to lead the Emperor's forces to France? I certainly did not. In his letter, the Emperor was quite, quite clear about his intentions to return order to France. I do not know the plans of Emperor Leopold, but I do know that I would never allow anyone to spill French blood. But you must admit that such an offer from an enemy government paints you in a bad light. Dear God, it is merely personal correspondence from my brother-in-law. It is not personal when the letters exchanged are by rulers and deal in matters of national security. Well. Was this act counter-revolutionary in nature? Yes. Why did... Oh, we didn't ask this. Hmm. Let's ask about... Let's ask about Roland. <clears throat> he was always loyal to France and the revolution. There was a time when I held him in high regard. We have a letter from the minister here in which he encourages bribery of deputies of the convention. I heard that when the cabinet containing new evidence was discovered, Roland dismissed his associates so he could carefully go through the contents by himself. During one meeting, I joked that we'd be able to save the balance of the Republic if I could just find one honest man in the convention who would back me. It would seem your hum humorless joke was taken quite seriously. Judging by what was left, I dread to think what documents the ministers su 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 ooh, succeeded in destroying. I hope the accused does not lose his job. It would be a pity. Hmm. Wait, which was it? He claims that it was a jest. Yeah. According to the... Okay, we need to figure out about Emperor Leopold. Why would the Emperor mention shortly before the journey that he expected to see the accused and his family within his borders shortly before said journey? 
The Emperor simply feared for the life of his sister. It is no secret that the European monarchs have a warped view of the revolution. They see it as a weapon against monarchy. Was the presence of forces in Montmedy intended to escort the accused to Austria also a mere coincidence? I swear I had nothing to do with that. We're still good. He was afraid for the life of his sister. His sister was Marie Antoinette? That's who that was? Did not know that. Well, I think we did this correctly. What do you what do you folks say? Is it time? Is it time to sharpen? I love sharpening. Don't you love sharpening? I just love to sharpen. Look, even our family wants this guy dead. Also, we absolutely have to do this. Look at Look, public opinion is so raw on us right now that we, if we don't do this, we're dead. It's either him or us. Signing it. Signing it. Putting my seal on it. Making it official. There it is. There's that Fidelity seal of fidelity. I sentence Citizen Capay to death by guillotine. Take the convict away. Long live the people. Down with the tyrant. Yes. Look at that reputation. That sweet, sweet reputation. Plus six reputation. Oh man, we scored. We scored hard on this one. I feel pretty good about this. Good job, everyone. We all we all pulled together to do some real real good law today. That's great. I need to go to the bathroom <laughs> again. I'm sorry. Do they understand? Their excitement was stronger than the smell of the fresh wood the guillotine was made from. Do they know what's about to happen? Sheep that only now realize they used to have fangs and claws. One thought guides their clenched fists to bow before the new, uncompromising idol with a shining steel crown. I too have felt their eyes on me, just like him. A silent assistant in this ritual of new faith. A random acolyte, scared, doubtful. Will not the old gods seek vengeance for this treachery? He abandoned them all too easily. I was unable to understand their screams. I only tasted the stench of their sweaty bodies. But I could hear one thing perfectly. 
Bring us the king. I apologize. I yeah, I, I was I was muted. Uh, we've got a perfect argument for crime and revolution, uh, but what do we do for the defendant? I wonder. Such a hideous deed demands torture. Should we torture him? Now what? Attitude towards the defendant. Do not listen to them when they say you cannot read. Listen to them when they beg for mercy at the guillotine. Yeah. Only death awaits the enemies of France. The crowd is intrigued. Reputation plus three. Nice. We, we are about. It's time. I die as an innocent man. I forgive my enemies. Pull the rope! <laughs> the smiling dude here. These faces are great. Love it. Wait, you, is that the map from Muggler's case? You stole evidence from the court? I found a use for it. It will be more useful in your room than in the dusty drawers of court archives. You should be more concerned about the events with the king because this whole situation just seems peculiar. As your superior, I should be the only... I should be the one judging Louis's case. I fail to understand why Robespierre asked for your assistance. Are you jealous? Of course I am jealous. It is an important moment in history and people will be reading about it for decades to come. It seems there will be trouble. I have a feeling that someone is toying with my life as though an un unknown force were pushing me into utter chaos. Keep your eyes open. You came to the political world of the city from out of nowhere. And that means someone will have to step down to make room. Do you have to sound so defeated? My husband is a renowned person now. We should be happy about it. Thank you. Finally, some support from our wife, who doesn't completely hate us right now. It is easier to shoot someone in the spotlight. Our family loves us! Yeah! Yeah, evening stroll seems best. Except. Oh no! Influence of the people, no! Day seven. In Liberty Fort. In Fort Liberty.
People shrugged the invisible burden off their backs. The streets seemed more peaceful. Even the windows at the courthouse were soon replaced. Dear Citizen Fideli, I am writing to congratulate you on becoming a part of, your of our country's history. Citizen Capet's trial is on everyone's lips. I would also like to discuss the important topic of appointing the new Commander-in-Chief of the National Guard, who will replace Citizen Burrell. It is my honest belief that I am the best candidate. I would like to pay you a visit this evening. Francis Francois Hanriot. Oh, we still have the people thing. Oh, everyone everyone expects this lady to be executed. What did she, what did she do? We are hanging in there. Magic Gents, thank you for that follow. In the dock sits the wife of convicted and executed citizen Louis Capet. Ah, ah, right, right, okay. Yeah, I should have seen this coming. Marie Antoinette, a 38-year-old Austrian who came to France at the age of 14 to wed the 16-year-old Louis. Their marriage was political. It was supposed to tighten the alliance between Austria and France. Both Marie Antoinette and her late husband lacked the experience and knowledge required to rule a country. Their incompetence resulted in France being left in debt, and the French in hunger and poverty. The former queen and her husband were incapable of restraining themselves from their prolific lifestyle, even when the price of bread became unapproachable for the common citizen. Marie Antoinette and Louis Capet tried to escape from the Tuileries Palace, where the Capets had been confined by the revolutionaries. The two intended to return to France with neighboring armies, but they were caught before they could cross the border. This is kind of this is a, a good way to kind of learn about my gaps in, kind of fill some of my gaps in history about the revolution, or at least the more common one, or at least the more you know the more spoken of one. Louis and Marie Antoinette were able to avoid lynching upon their return due to. Antoine Barnave's protection. The famous orator interceded on their behalf, which made him a suspect. It is thought that Marie Antoinette ensnared him so as to use him for her political agenda. For many years, Marie Antoinette has been accused of acting against France's best interest, plunging the state's budget into a deep deficit, plotting against the revolution, and trying to rebuild the monarchy. The failures of France against Austria can be attributed to her treason. We suspect that she conveyed French military secrets to her homeland, but we lack evidence to support this claim. The citizen is also accused of promiscu- Promiscuity! Skewity! 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 <laughs> Moreover, there has been suggestions that she sexually harassed her eight-year-old son, Louis Charles. Alright. Alright. You, uh, huh. Mm -hmm. Prolificate lifestyle? That's an offending- That's- Either an accusation or the offender's personality. Capet's escape is an event. Restoration of the monarchy is accusation and probably counter-revolution. No. Military secrets is an accusation. Promiscuity is an accusation or personality. Personality. Yeah. Oh, it is a accusation. Which one's an accusation? The lifestyle or the young Louis Charles Capet? Promiscuity was pretty much a crime at this time in France. Good to know. Yeah, I messed up a couple times, and we've got four questions left to reveal. Uh, what about this Barnave dude? Able to avoid lynching upon their return to the... All right, he protected them. Interceded on their half, which made him a suspect.
accusation. Hmm. I've got a problem. That sucks. That one wasn't very clear. Maria Antonia Josepha Johanna von Austerix, also known as Marie Antoinette of Austria. However, I prefer to be called the Queen. I will use the term the accused. Why not, you, Aust you Austrian whore? Uh-huh. Okay, good. Wait, we still might be able to get what we want, guys. Why did the accused live in luxury? Take a look at the previous queen's expenditures and the one before her. Once you compare them, you'll see I was using far less money than they were. We must also take into account the situation of the citizens then, and during the reign of the accused and her husband. Take into account my rotten potatoes. I do not recall the former queens being addicted to gambling. Oh, you should talk. We all have our vices. I must admit that you and Antoine Barnave are much alike. <laughs> yeah, you know what we do with monarchists in these parts? Has the accused ever suspected that he helped you for his own profit? I never even considered such a thing. Antoine is a good person who wanted to help. I am not one to judge him for his political views. The most important thing you shared was your hatred of France. Nonsense. I... We had to survive on bones while you were devouring meat. Yes. Sharpen. 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 <laughs> Has the accused ever conveyed French military secrets to Austria? What manner of secrets could I possibly know? Let us start with the strength and weaponry of the army. I mean, we're going to miss some questions on this because we got locked out of the out of discovering questions, so we're going to fuck up on this one. It's kind of a given. What an absurd accusation. I could not even tell a mortar from a musket. You do not have to know the difference to take notes and send them to other parties. I am the queen, not a spy. She denies it, the whore. Um, did the convent... The defendant con uh, confessed to the crime. No. Was her act counter-revolutionary in nature? Yes. What was the defendant's relationship with Barnave? Um, they're either friends or lovers, but I'm not sure which. I'm going to say they were friends. And I think I am going to end this trial now. Death! Death! Death. Death. Penalty. We can acquit her, but we won't. I sentence the accused Marie Antoinette of Austria to the guillotine. The Ancien Regime should have been beheaded long ago. Huzzah! <laughs> Justice is served at last. Hey, I did it. How about that? Not bad. Not bad if I do say so myself. And I do say so. That was a net gain. I, I turned that uh I turned that into a net gain. Good job, me. Crowd is irritated. Uh, let us speak to them. They're attached to her? They're attached to her the idea of her crime? Mm. 
No opinion. A very weak argument. A perfect argument. A very weak argument. Okay. Okay, so the second one must be aggression. If they're attached to her, maybe we should manipulate them. Maybe we should manipulate and then be hum and then speak with humility on the on the last one. So, manipulation, aggression, humility. Manipulation. Future generations will remember that we were not cowards. They will remember us delivering punishment for such hideous crimes. Very good. Aggression. We shall be head on another monster feeding on injustice. And humility. Citizens, we must return to work so we may build our new France for the nation. Oh, I lost a little bit. Reputation minus one. Okay, questionable success. I, I kind of flubbed it at the last second. <laughs> Did I step on you? That was completely unintentional. Pull the rope! <laughs> there are different faces every time. Your wife told me that if I seek the support of just people, I should look for them in your house. Here he is. Citizen Hand Riot. My husband will be more than happy to endorse your candidacy for the post of Commander-in-Chief. Oh, I need to look that up. Why does this feel like a faint accompli? Hang on. Hang on. A thing that has already happened or been decided before those affected hear about it, leaving them with no option but to accept it. Done deal. Right. Good phrase. I like that. Please do not be angry at your wife. I am sure that she acted in good faith when she made those promises. How could anyone refuse to support such a respectable officer? I am certain that my husband will acknowledge your merits, just as I have. Undoubtedly. But how can I be so sure when there are so many other candidates? I respect the other candidates. They are decent people. However, I can offer you the most precious gift. Loyalty. Working together, we can greatly benefit each other, and maybe Paris, too. Our family has a high regard for sincerity and loyalty, does it not, my dear? Moreover, we respect each other's boundaries. Oh, this is Alexis Fideli. Why did I not catch that his name was Alexis? Those ugly rumors about you being an addict should be put to an end. Note that I never forget those who have done me a favor. Oh, is this like a guy who will help us out and we could expend influence points on it? No other candidate has asked for your endorsement. They do not think you are worthy of their friendship. But I, Francois Hanriot, am different, and so are my words. Paris is only as strong as its united elites. In the future, make sure you come to me first. But of course. Family is happy with us. Killing a king is very good for family unity, it seems. Maybe opening night at the theater. The theater. Let's take a break from reality. Oh, we just missed it. Hmm. 
Hmm. The evening is warm, so you decide to take the long way home. Near the Café Chantilly, you spot an amusing scene, two drunkards fighting over a bottle of liquor, cursing like stable boys. The first is shorter and dressed in a disheveled officer's uniform, possibly a colonel. The second fighter, although significantly taller, is just an ordinary street thug. You listen to the gibberish and tangled epithets only to reach the conclusion that the bottle contains one last gulp of drink. Did we try to separate? Did we try to dispute, settle this, the dispute, or ignore them? What do you think, chat? How do you feel about this? Do we want to get involved? What shall we do? Don't get involved. Not our problem. <laughs> yeah, we're a judge. We're not good at settling disputes. Fuck this. The taller drunkard won by finally mustering all of his strength. The officer landed face first in the mud, and the last sip of drink gently washed over the winner's tongue. There is nothing else left to see. A bottle of something exquisite waits for you at home. How did our reputation go up from that? Probably because it would have been bad otherwise. Ah. A Paris of a new era. Weak, vulnerable to attacks. Waiting for someone to reach for power. Waiting for someone who, once again, will take control of its soul. Yeah, this is the map that we got. The pawns are now in play. Recent days have proven that Paris can win, that France can win. We managed to overcome our past, divesting our last remaining tyrant of his power. Now it is time to rebuild, to create symbols that inspire future generations. That is why during a gathering of the convention, several enterprising citizens proposed the construction of a statue to commemorate the revolutionary victory over injustice. You were given the honor of supervising the construction. There is no better candidate than the one who vanquished Louis Capet. You have an opportunity to leave yet another mark on Paris. Each section can be controlled by you, by an enemy, or be neutral. Okay. So now we got territory control. Interesting. Each section you take over provides you with one additional influence point. The chance of mission success is higher in your territory. Enemy agents can also take over your sections. Actions performed in enemy sections are less likely to be successful. Some sections are locked. Unlock them with any agent to carry out actions with them. To unlock a section, you have to scout it first. You can only unlock sections adjacent to ones that are already unlocked. Right, so you have to kind of push into enemy territory. This seems like kind of like a 4X game almost. Each section reacts to the situation in the game, causing the fervor of its residents to rise or fall. If their fervor becomes too intense, it can result in riots. Send agents on missions, manage unruly crowds, and fight for influence over the city. Click an agent and choose the action you wish them to carry out. Bruiser is good at fighting, gaining reputation, and managing unruly crowds. Diplomat takes over sections, nurtures relations with factions, and lowers fervor. Weaker in duels against enemy agents. Okay. Can only okay. They move free in your in your territory, but only one space per day in neutral or hostile sections. That makes sense. Okay. Days until inspection. Unknown character. Who are we playing against right now? Who are we fighting? I wonder. Oh shit, monument construction. I like this one. Yes, very fancy. Elegant. Adequately, 
you know, confirms how good I am at law. Also, yeah, just a statue of a guillotine. I was kind of hoping that would be an option. Oh, hang on. There we go. Oh, wow. What? We got a whole new game here. Each building lets you perform a different kind of action, take over the ones that support your playstyle. Take actions related to your family and persuaded characters. Political salon. Actions granted by this building will facilitate court work. The hideout. Help agents and operate more efficiently in Paris. The printing house. Enables actions against the Muscadins and the Revolutionary Patrol. I don't know if this is development bloat. I don't know. Like, I have no idea where we're going right now. It may be too much for me to process, but I'll, I'll keep with it and see where we end up. You know? We're still early. It feels like we're still early in the game, actually. Like, I thought... Like, I kind of expected it to... I would expect, like, the game... The version of this game that is kind of in development to end with the trial of Louis XVI... Like, that's kind of... That would be, like, a short game. But this is, you know, we're still in Act 1. And, yeah, this game is just about... Is not just about, you know, the act of convicting and executing the former king, but the, you know, the political unrest after that. Whenever you finish the stage of construction, you'll be able to seize another building. Okay. Faction, the people. Increase influence. Let's start attacking this district. <laughs> All right. Spend more time with your family or facilitate the persuasions. Okay, so we don't have access to that just yet, but it's there. Yeah, I think Loon might enjoy this game. I'll have to show it to him. I think he's busy today. I think he's got some stuff to do. A bloody beginning. A violent prologue announced by a flowing red curtain. The wrath of strangers made me sick to my stomach. Feet stirred dark puddles. The air tasted like iron. Their heads, someone cried. Anger hidden in the shadows. Thousands of cries from a single throat. Here was a beast with hundreds of claws and teeth. A kicked, abused, and physically wounded soul. Their heads... What a cold and urgent order. The beast's eyes showed a long disguised bitterness, yesterday's envy. It has waited too long to show mercy now. Too long covering its ears while others laughed at its inadequacies and feebleness. The beast's bark was filled with a thousand smiles of those who worship this bloody morning. The day when their enemies will perish. Their brothers. It's time to turn on our fellow citizens, I guess, is what we're getting at here. Bad relationship with father. Good relationship with sons. 
Hey, we're getting back up there. We're fighting back. Common folk and family expect an acquittal for this, uh, for this defendant. The revolutionaries expect prison. Report. Did the defendant confess to the crime? Was his act counter-revolutionary in nature? What was the reason behind the argument the defendant had with the victim? And does the defendant understand the indictment? All right. Death penalty will be some pretty severe. Okay. All right. Probably going to go for acquittal, but we'll see. We'll see where we end up here. Bruno Hugo is a groom working for the wealthy and influential aristocrat jean Claude. Oh, man, I'm having... the. We're a few hours in, so I'm having trouble reading pretty hard, especially French words, so bear with me, please. Jean-Claude Jean de Jacquard, Jacques Mard, during a quarrel, he was seen to push his employer down the stairs, resulting in the aristocrat's death. It is significantly for the case that, due to his origin and low intellect, Bruno Hugo is known in the local community as Village Idiot. The witnesses testified that Jacques Mard returned from a ride displeased with the way Bruno had prepared his horse. Apparently, the saddle had become so loose that citizen de Jacques Mard almost fell from his mount. The victim called for Bruno in order to scold him and began insulting and physically abusing the stable boy. When acting on an impulse, Bruno pushed his employer away. As a result, citizen de Jacques Mard landed at the foot of the stairs with a twisted neck. The incident happened in front of other employees. Bruno Hugo escaped to the stable where he is later found pale with fright and whispering something to one of the horses. Ah, oh, This seems like a fucking accident, guys. There is a trap here. It's pr it's definitely the shouts and struggles. Well, wait, hang on. Wait, right. Offender's personality. Village idiot. Oh. When they said he was a groom, I thought he was getting married. My bad. Yeah, no, he, he grooms horses. Yeah. Um, groom. Offender's personality. Or that's just the trap. Alright, there's only five questions here. Surely I can do this. Because it's really not... Yeah, of course. It's not terribly related to the actual thing. Loose saddle. Twisted neck. Accusation? Nah, not every trap. I think I avoided a couple. But yeah, I do walk into a lot of them, definitely. Return from a ride. Motive? I'm not sure how to do these remaining ones. There's still four... Uh, the trap means that one of these topics is kind of unrelated to any of the questions we we would logically want to answer. So it, it it's a trap. It'll count as a strike against us. Nope. Not method. Return from a ride... Witnesses testified. <laughs> Leave him alone, he's just a man-child. Do you admit to the murder? But I... All right. M 
motive. Okay. There's also shouts and struggle witnesses. Were there, were there witnesses that saw the shouts and struggle? Witnesses. It's probably witnesses. A lot of these things. No. Method. So then what is this last one? Shouts and struggle. <clears throat> Not really sure. That's also method? Oh, okay. That's the method of death. Yeah. These... Sometimes these words are a little too vague. Like, me method of something would tell me what I'm looking for. Heroic Cream Puff. Thanks for that follow. All right. We got all the questions. If you strike out, if you, and I only had one more strike there, but if you strike out, you don't get to ask any more questions and you, and this list will not fully populate. So you may not be able to do everything you want to do. As a stable boy, were you responsible for preparing horses for the victim? Combed them and I fed them. Horses eat a lot of grass. I combed them. Was the saddle loose? Citizen? No, impossible. I pulled the straps. You can't pull too hard or it crushes and hurts the horse's stomach. Horses are good. Better than humans. They... Did you want your master to fall off the horse? Did you deliberately leave the girth strap loose to get back at your employer? Never. I liked our master. I wouldn't hurt him. I liked him. You can see that he's a gentle child. Are you aware that you have killed a man? Do you understand that? I know. I was. I just swung my arm because he was shouting at me like that. So loud. Were you aware that you could hurt him? I didn't think so. I didn't. Did you swing so hard he fell down? I get so scared I can't remember. I squinted my eyes, sir, and when I opened them again, he was... There he was, lying down there, downstairs. I... His act was not counter-revolutionary. A loose saddle. I think he under he understands the indictment, right? Like, he, he... He definitely did say... Yeah, he did say yes. Do you plead guilty? I don't know what I did wrong. I don't understand. These people wanted me to come here, so I came. I meant no harm to nobody. You are facing the death penalty for murder. Do you realize that? I just want to go back to the horses. I don't know if they've eaten today. If a horse doesn't eat for a long time, the master isn't happy when the horses aren't fed. Are you more worried about the horses than about your master? The master is dead. What can I do? And the horses are still alive. They're alive. Let's call in the witness. And then that should do it. Major Domo at the residence of the day Jacques Mard family. I saw exactly what happened. Your opinions are irrelevant. Tell us what happened, please. Loose saddle could have caused an accident. Bruno pushed Citizen de Jacques Mard away, causing both causing him to fall down the stairs they were both standing on. Yeah, this seems like a pretty easy case to me. He did not confess to the crime. He said he didn't do anything wrong. But he does understand the indictment. Uh, 
I think I find I think I will go with the jury and say that this is uh pretty open and shut. What do you guys think? I find Bruno Hugo not guilty of the aforementioned crimes, as he is unaware of what happened. What does it matter? A crime is a crime. You have to be careful with the likes of this one. His employer should have known better. Ah. He doesn't understand- Wait, that was- It was reverse. It was in reverse from what I was expecting. Okay. Yeah, I guess, uh, chat was correct. Some people were just saying that they doubted my answer on that. And I guess they were right. Reputation and influence plus one. Very good, very good. Ah, Roland, hello. My name is Jean-Marie Roland. My name should not be... Should not be unknown to you. After all, you wiped your shoes on it during King Louis's trial. Citizen Capet, not King. King Louis Auguste Bourbon, Duke de Berry. Thanks to you flinging around half-truths and speculation, everyone is calling for my head, accusing me of corruption and treason, while you used our backs as a stepladder on your way up the social hierarchy. Corrupting politicians does not always work out. Danton does it, Mulville try. Mulville tried to, but they caught you. Happens. I will probably be dismissed from my station. I may even end up at the guillotine. But I will make sure your head rolls right after mine. You will be my comrade in misery. Threatening, of the ju threatening a judge at the tribunal is an even worse idea than supporting a de despised king and corrupting politicians of the convention. I will get rid of your candidate for captain of the guard. Then I will go after you. It took me and my wife too long to get to where we were. Where we are. I will not die because of some overboozed maggot that likes to call himself a judge. You will see how we wage war in Paris' salons, you treacherous mongrel. Well then, we have an enemy. Dear comrade, I have heard the news of, of uh, Minister Roland's unexpected visit. I have to confess that Roland knows about me something that he should not have. I am certain he is already weaving an intrigue against us. We have to start working on one against him. Francois Henry. All right. Dinner with the family. Play something for me, son. I have work to do. As you wish, father. We're doing okay. Hey! We're doing good, guys. All right, everyone will hate us if we do that. Work on tomorrow's trial. Everyone will hate us if we do that. We get political debate. Paragraphs and codes. Reading together. Yeah, let's read together. Why not? Or Viola Concerto. No, I kind of want to, yeah, support. No, I'll we'll read with the dad. Excellent. We're doing good. Uh-oh. Enemy agents. They can take over your sections or neutral sections. When at least two hostile agents meet in one section, combat ensues. Remember that a diplomat has a little chance against a brutal fighter. Yeah. After a defeat in combat, your agent becomes injured. They can still move around, but are not able to perform any actions. Your main section is vital. The buildings here enable you to influence the rest of the game. Protect it at all costs. If you let it out of your grasp, you will lose the game. Well, we can't lose the game. Let's fight. Let's 
Let's lower fervor. We could spend more time with our family. We're at the end of the day, so we might as well spend influence, right? Ten days left before the inspection. Might as well use our reputation, because it refills every day. There's nothing I can do to build this statue, really. I already missed my chance to do that. Intrigue. Jean-Marie Roland. Documents discovered in Capet's Iron Cabinet raise suspicions regarding Roland. Right, that's when he got implicated. The minister hates the tribunal for openly ridiculing him, and he will not forgive you for it. His intelligent wife holds an even stronger grudge. Number of successes. Required to win, three. Number for a bonus, five. Perform actions correctly to fill the progress bar. If you carry out two... Oh, is this a minigame? Progress bar. So far, there are only rumors that Roland destroyed the documents. If we, sign, if we find someone from a social circle to corroborate this, we gain a powerful tool. Felipe Cote was among the people who opened Capet's, Capet's Iron Cabinet. Oh, I used all my influence already. Let's try and convince him. Here he is. Thank you for coming, Citizen Coat. How could I say no to a person who holds the lives of kings in the palm of his hand? I presume that our meeting is connected to Minister Roland. Oh, yes, we said yes. It is indeed rather ugly. The minister could lose his head because of it, although it is nothing more than gossip. Yes, but what if the gossip suddenly turned into the truth? Then things would certainly get nasty. Withdrawn, huh? I bet he's really withdrawn from this whole thing. Let's be aggressive all the way through. Let's get aggressive with this guy. I need Roland's head. He is a pest. By bribing politicians, he has harmed all of France. We need the witnesses that saw him opening the iron chest to reveal his identity. We need you, citizen. Roland has his vices, but are they enough to justify my betrayal? Because that is what you ask of me. Aggressive. It is the well-being of... If the well-being of France is not enough for you, then let me just say, citizen, that if you help me, your chances of survival will increase. After all, someone could accuse you of complicity in Roland's crimes. Carrot and stick. All right, let's go for it. Minister Roland's days are numbered. We only need a witness to those events, and you, citizen, shall reveal his crimes. Otherwise, you will be decapitated with him. I must say that your words are not very convincing. I will help, but remember that I know, now know more about your plans. Ah, I see. He's doubtful. We succeeded, but only just barely, it seems. Allies gained one. Spreading rumors. When Roland recognized the contents of the Iron Cabinet, he allegedly asked for a moment of privacy and was left alone with the evidence. Yeah, our rep needs to be stronger. In light of Citizen Capet being accused of conspiracy and the lack of evidence, we could try accusing the minister of destroying it. Code confirming these sensational details would surely help. Probably diplomatically. Alright. Action will be performed the next day. Only a 10% chance of success, though. I'm not feeling that great about it. Alright. Alright, I think that's our moves for the day.
The dice have been rolled. Yes. All right. Is that a day? Day nine. All right, guys. I uh, admittedly am a little tired of reading. I think I might have to call it here for now. This is a good start for this game. I'm interested in where this game is going. We have started political combat with our enemies. Intrigue combat. I, I am intrigued to see where this game goes. What do you guys think? You enjoying this so far? I think it's kind of a neat little system. It seems pretty easy to game the, the trial system, but the rest of it, well, we'll find out. We'll have to find out about that. Yeah, thank you, uh, Discard, for turning me onto this game, because it, it seems pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty into it. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to try and do Gunstar Heroes again with Slow Beef. He promised it would happen this time. So, uh, hang around for that, folks. That'll probably be a little later than normal, so maybe I'll play some of this to, uh, some of this or Baba Is You to, uh, start up, to warm up, so to speak. Uh, and I'll probably do this again next Saturday, because this is a neat game, and I want to play some more of it. So thank you guys for watching. This will be up on YouTube soon. And, uh, we'll see you on Tuesday.